fly the drone like literally 10 meters away. It's an amazing feeling. Oh my God. The tranquil landscape of southwestern Iceland has just been rudely interrupted by a seismic event of cataclysmic proportions. After weeks of tremors, forcing the evacuation of hundreds of residents, the Grindavik volcano, which had been dormant for over 800 years, has suddenly erupted with a massive force. A 100-foot crack ripped through the Earth's crust, spewing out dazzling jets of lava and billowing clouds of smoke. What triggered this explosive event? How does it rank among the history of volcanic eruptions in Iceland? And what are the implications for the environment and humanity? I want to talk about the situation in Iceland because more than 500 earthquakes were recorded in southwest Iceland on Monday, shaking houses, damaging roads and leading to hundreds of evacuations. Join us as we delve into the recent event that has erupted in Iceland and its far-reaching implication. Before we delve into the recent volcanic eruption that has occurred in Iceland, it's important to understand some context. Iceland is a unique country in many ways. It is the most sparsely populated country in Europe, with only about 360,000 people living on an island of 39,768 square miles. That's roughly the size of Virginia, but with less than 5% of its population. It is also one of the youngest land masses on Earth, formed by the collision of two tectonic plates, the North American Plate and the Eurasian Plate. These plates are moving apart at a rate of about one inch per year, creating a rift zone that runs through the middle of the country. This rift zone is where most of the volcanic activity in Iceland occurs, as magma rises from the mantle and fills the gaps between the plates. But what makes Iceland even more fascinating is that it also sits on a hot spot, a plume of hot material that rises from deep within the earth and melts the crust above it. The hotspot is responsible for some of the most active volcanoes in Iceland, such as Hekla, Katla, and Ejafjallajökull. These volcanoes have erupted frequently and violently throughout history, shaping the landscape and the culture of the island. The hotspot also creates geothermal energy, which is used to power about 25% of the country's electricity and heat almost 90% of its buildings. Icelanders enjoy the benefits of this renewable and cheap energy source, which also helps them reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. Iceland is one of Earth's most volcanically active areas, with 32 active volcanic sites. But what does this mean for the people who live there and the rest of the world? It means that Icelanders have to cope with the constant threat of eruptions, which can have devastating effects on their lives and livelihoods. It also means that Iceland can have a significant impact on the global climate and environment, as volcanic eruptions can release large amounts of ash, gas, and aerosols into the atmosphere. Iceland averages an eruption every four to five years, though the frequency has increased closer to every 12 months since 2021. Iceland has a long and rich history of volcanic eruptions, dating back to the first settlers in the 9th century. Some of these eruptions have been so powerful and destructive that they have changed the course of history, not only for Iceland, but for the whole world. One of the deadliest eruptions was the Laki eruption of 1783 to 1784, which killed about a quarter of the population and caused a famine that lasted for several years. The eruption also affected the climate of Europe and North America, causing crop failures, droughts, and cold winters. Some historians believe that this eruption contributed to the French Revolution and the American War of Independence, as it increased social unrest and political turmoil. Another notable eruption was the Askja eruption of 1875, which created a large caldera and a lake that is now a popular tourist attraction. The eruption also triggered a mass emigration of Icelanders to North America, seeking a better life. About 15,000 people left the island, which was about 20% of the population at the time. A more recent example is the Surtsey eruption of 1963 to 1967, which created a new island off the south coast of Iceland. The island is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a natural laboratory for studying how life colonizes new land. Scientists have observed how plants, animals, and microbes have arrived and adapted to the island, 
providing valuable insights into the evolution of life on Earth. And then, the most disruptive in recent times is the Ijaf Jalajokul eruption of 2010, which disrupted air travel across Europe and the world for several weeks. The eruption spewed giant clouds of ash high into the atmosphere over Europe, creating a hazard for aviation. About 100,000 flights were grounded, millions of international travelers stranded and air travel was halted for days because of concerns the fine ash could damage jet engines. The eruption also caused flooding, ash fall, and lightning storms in Iceland, affecting the lives of thousands of people and animals. The eruption had a huge economic and social impact, costing billions of dollars in lost revenue and disrupting trade, tourism, and education. It also raised awareness of the potential risks and challenges posed by volcanic eruptions in the modern world. However, the recent eruption of the Grindavik volcano is a rare and remarkable event, as it is the first eruption on the peninsula in 800 years. The eruption occurred on the Reykjans Peninsula, the southwestern tip of Iceland, where the capital city of Reykjavik is located. The peninsula is a volcanic system that consists of several fissures, cones, craters, and lava fields. The system has been dormant for about 800 years, until recently. But what triggered this sudden awakening of the volcano? It all started on December 18th, 2023, at 10 p.m. local time, when a large earthquake of magnitude 5.7 shook the peninsula followed by hundreds of smaller aftershocks. The earthquake was the result of a magma intrusion, a process where magma forces its way through the crust and creates pressure and cracks. The magma then reached the surface, and a volcanic eruption began. This was the first sign that something extraordinary was happening on the peninsula, something that had not been seen for centuries. The eruption site is located about 5.6 miles northeast of the town of Grindavik, and about 19 miles from Reykjavik. The eruption is occurring along a two, five miles long fissure, which has six segments that are active at different times. The fissure is oriented in a northeast-southwest direction, parallel to the rift zone. The eruption is classified as a Hawaiian-style eruption, which means that it produces fluid lava flows and fountains, rather than explosive ash and rocks. This type of eruption is relatively mild compared to other types of eruptions that can be more violent and dangerous. However, it poses immense risk, which we'll look into soon. According to the Icelandic Meteorological Office, the lava eruption rate is estimated to be about 8,828 cubic feet per second, which is the highest in Iceland since the Holuhran eruption of 2014 to 2015. The lava is basaltic, which means that it has a low viscosity and a high temperature, ranging from 2034 to 2192 degrees Fahrenheit. The lava flows are advancing at a speed of about 32 feet per hour and have covered an area of about 10 square kilometers so far. The lava is also emitting large amounts of volcanic gases, such as carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and water vapor. Meteorological reports show that lava fountains from the eruption reached as high as 100 feet. The eruption is visible from space, as satellites have captured stunning images of the lava glow and the gas plume. The eruption is also attracting thousands of visitors who are flocking to the peninsula to witness the spectacle. Authorities in southwest Iceland have set up a checkpoint about five miles away from the eruption zone, the closest point to the lava flow where members of the public have been gathering to watch. From there, they can see the red-hot lava spilling out of the fissure, creating a contrast with the snow-covered landscape. They can also hear the hissing and crackling sounds of the eruption and smell the sulfur and smoke in the air. The eruption has become a source of fascination and excitement for many people who are eager to see and experience something new and extraordinary. But the eruption is not only a spectacle of nature, it is also a significant threat to the people and the environment. What will happen to Grindavik, a town that depends on tourism and fishing for its livelihood? How will the authorities protect the town from the advancing lava flows? And what if the eruption spreads to other parts of the peninsula, affecting the airport, the geopark, and the capital? Grindavik is a town home to about 3,800 people and famous for its geothermal spa, the Blue Lagoon, which attracts millions of tourists every year. 
The town is also home to a geothermal power plant, a fish processing plant, and a harbor. All these facilities are at risk of being destroyed by the lava, which is following the natural topography of the land. The lava could reach the town in a matter of days or weeks, depending on the eruption rate and the direction of the flow. The lava could also cut off the main road that connects the town to the rest of the peninsula and the capital. The authorities have been trying to prevent or divert the lava flows using various methods. One method is to build lava walls, which are artificial barriers made of earth and rocks that are meant to block or redirect the lava. Another method is to use ocean water as a coolant, spraying it on the lava to slow it down or solidify it. However, these methods have limitations and uncertainties as they require a lot of resources, time, and coordination. They also may not be effective, as the lava could breach the walls or flow around them. Moreover, they could have unintended consequences, such as creating steam explosions or altering the chemical composition of the lava. Another possibility is that the eruption could expand along a prior dike, which is a vertical crack that forms when magma intrudes into the crust. The dike could act as a conduit for the magma to reach other parts of the peninsula, creating new fissures and eruptions. This could have a direct impact on Grindavik, as the dike runs underneath the town. The dike could also affect other areas, such as the Keflavik International Airport, the main gateway to Iceland, or the Reykjans Geopark, a UNESCO global geopark that showcases the geological diversity and heritage of the peninsula. The authorities have issued urgent safety warnings, advising people to stay away from the eruption site and the lava flows. They have also taken measures to protect the public and the environment, such as closing several roads and trails and setting up checkpoints and cordons to control the access and the traffic. They have also prepared evacuation plans and shelters in case the situation worsens and the town needs to be evacuated. The authorities have also been monitoring the air quality and the gas emissions, as they pose a serious health hazard for humans and animals. The gases can cause respiratory problems, irritation, headaches, and nausea. They can also affect the vegetation, the soil, and the water sources. The authorities are doing their best to ensure the safety and the well-being of the people and nature, but they are also facing many challenges and uncertainties. The authorities have also been collaborating with scientists and experts who are studying the eruption and its effects. The scientists have been collecting data and samples using various instruments and methods such as drones, helicopters, seismometers, GPS, cameras, and sensors. The scientists have also been communicating with the public, providing updates and information, and answering questions and concerns. The scientists are trying to understand the eruption and its implications, but they are also fascinated and curious about this rare and remarkable event. The eruption has also sparked a lot of interest and curiosity, not only among the locals and the visitors, but also among the global community. The Reykjanes eruption is a rare and remarkable event, as it is the first eruption on the peninsula in 800 years as mentioned earlier, and the first in this specific location in about 6,000 years. But what triggered this sudden awakening of the volcano? And what are the factors that influence its behavior and evolution? These are some of the main questions that scientists are trying to answer, and they've identified several possible factors responsible for the eruption. One of them is the tectonic stress, the force that results from the movement of the plates. When the stress becomes too high, it can fracture the crust and create pathways for the magma to rise. Another factor is the magma supply, the amount and the composition of the magma that is available in the mantle and the crust. The supply can affect how fast, how hot, and how gassy the eruption is. A third factor is the pre-existing structures, the cracks, faults, and dikes that exist in the crust. These structures can act as conduits or barriers for the magma, influencing where and how it flows. Finally, there are the external factors, the events or conditions that affect the eruption from the outside, such as the weather, the climate, the ocean, and the human activities. These factors can affect how visible, how accessible, and how impactful the eruption is. The Reykjans eruption is not an isolated event, but one of the many examples of how volcanoes can affect and shape the Earth in profound and often devastating ways. 
Volcanoes are natural features that result from the movement of tectonic plates, which are large pieces of the Earth's crust that float on the molten mantle. When these plates collide, diverge, or slide past each other, they create cracks or openings in the crust, through which magma, gas, ash, and other materials can escape from the interior of the Earth. Volcanoes can have various effects depending on the type, the size, and the location of the eruption. Some of these effects are lava flows and pyroclastic flows. These are fast-moving and destructive streams of molten rock and hot gas that can incinerate, bury, or displace anything in their path. Lava flows can create new landforms, such as islands and volcanoes, or destroy existing ones, such as forests and villages. Pyroclastic flows can travel at speeds of up to 700 kilometers per H and can reach temperatures of up to 1,000 degrees C, making them extremely dangerous and deadly. Volcanic gases. These are substances that are released from the magma, such as carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and water vapor. These gases can cause respiratory problems, irritation, headaches, and nausea for humans and animals. They can also affect the vegetation, the soil, and the water sources, making them acidic or toxic. The intense pressure seeks an outlet, leading to volcanic vents that rupture the Earth's crust, resulting in an eruption. In the case of Iceland, the geological conditions, especially its position on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, make it particularly susceptible to such volcanic activities. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a significant geological feature that runs through the Atlantic Ocean. It marks the boundary between tectonic plates, where new oceanic crust is formed as magma rises from the mantle. Iceland's location on this ridge exposes it to the intricate interplay of geological forces. The eruption could manifest the ongoing processes beneath the Earth's surface, shaped by the movement and interactions of these tectonic plates. The recent volcanic activity in Iceland is a vivid reminder of the Earth's dynamic nature. It highlights how geological forces, driven by the shifting plates beneath our feet, can give rise to awe-inspiring yet potentially destructive events. The interconnectedness of Earth's geological features, combined with magma accumulation over time, contributes to the complex tapestry of volcanic activities observed in regions like Iceland. Environmental factors such as changes in temperature and pressure can also play a role. These changes may influence the stability of the Earth's crust and contribute to the conditions that lead to volcanic eruptions. Iceland, with its dynamic geological setting, is particularly prone to these natural phenomena. Human activities, while less likely, can also be a contributing factor. While biological processes primarily drive volcanic eruptions, certain human-induced activities, such as drilling or geothermal projects, have the potential to impact the stability of underground structures and influence volcanic behavior. What is the world saying about the eruption? And what could the eruption mean? Is it a sign or punishment from God? News of the recent volcanic eruption in Iceland has captured global attention, sparking conversations and reactions from people worldwide. Social media platforms are buzzing with discussions as individuals share their thoughts, concerns, and expressions about this natural event. Many people are expressing awe at the power of nature, appreciating the stunning visuals of the erupting volcano. Photos and videos circulating online capture the raw beauty and force of the eruption, creating a sense of wonder among viewers. The vibrant colors of molten lava against the night sky have become a captivating spectacle, and people from various corners of the globe are marveling at the forces that shape our planet. Concerns for the local population in Iceland are also evident in the discussions. People empathize with those living near the volcanic activity, acknowledging the potential disruptions and challenges they may face. The impact on local communities, infrastructure, and the environment is a genuine concern, with many expressing hopes for the safety and well-being of those affected. Some individuals connect this eruption and broader discussions on climate change and environmental issues. While recognizing that volcanic eruptions are natural occurrences, there are conversations about the Earth's